we've all grown up knowing that the Earth is round, has a moon that orbits it, and both travel around the sun. But believe it or not, this knowledge wasn't so basic thousands of years ago. It's true. The ancient Greeks believed the Earth was flat, and the sun and the stars were perfectly fixed in the sky. Well, thanks to the work of some pretty bright astronomers over the years, astronomy has advanced from a basic understanding of the Earth and our solar system to discoveries and exploration of other galaxies and stars, and we owe it all to them. Have you ever wondered what it might be like to actually sit down and talk with some of them today? You were thinking about lunch again, weren't you? Yeah. The history of astronomy, this time on Spaced Out. Astronomy has evolved immensely over the last thousand years or so. The work of several astronomers with revolutionary theories as time has progressed, we've been able to improve upon many of these theories. We've gathered several renowned astronomers from the last couple of thousand years and asked them here to dinner. Don't ask us how we did it. It's a long story and um, it involves several minivans. This is Aristotle from around 350 BCE, known by many as the father of science. He was the first person to note that the Earth is a sphere. This is Ptolemy, an astronomer and mathematician from around 100 AD. He believed that the Earth was at the center of the universe and the sun and the stars traveled around it. He also compiled the first chart of the world in a book called Geography. That's Copernicus from the 16th century AD. He was the one that refuted Ptolemy's theory by noting that the Earth actually orbits around the sun. Things have been kind of tense between them ever since. Would anybody care for rolls? Yes, please. Anyone at all? Real mature, Tommy. Real mature. I'll take one. That's Galileo, the Italian physicist and astronomer from the early 1600s. He was the first astronomer to utilize a telescope and discovered the moons of Jupiter, sunspots, and that the Milky Way is made up of many stars. Over there is Kepler from the 16th century. He was the one that discovered the planets travel around the sun in an elliptical orbit. I think I may have stolen this from the bean dish. And that's Steve. Welcome astronomers and fellow scientists. I must say it's truly an honor to be here with- Excuse me. I was under the impression there'd be a couple of single women joining us for dinner tonight. Oh, yes. 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 What about? I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not sure who told you that. Oh, I see. I actually wanted to talk with all of you about your studies of the Earth and the solar systems. Ah, such as my findings that the Earth and planets orbit the sun. That is a hypothesis, Copernicus. There are other ideas out there, you know. Such as your idea that the universe is geocentric? Geocentric. Adjective. Revolving around the Earth. Yes. There is no proof that Copernicus's concept is any more correct than mine. Actually, based on Copernicus' ideas, I was able to prove that the Earth, in fact, was moving around the Sun in a heliocentric orbit. Heliocentric. Adjective. Revolving around the sun. So basically what Galileo just said. It was a very controversial theory at the time. Yours is very much the accepted one, Ptolemy. Yeah, tell me about it. I faced backlash from the Catholic Church who, even in the 1600s, believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. Because it is. Again, prove that it isn't. Actually, Ptolemy, we've made major astronomical progress in the last 500 years. We've sent spacecraft and even people into outer space, and they've witnessed firsthand the movements of the Earth. The geocentric theory has been proven definitively wrong. Oh, 
I get it. It's pick on Ptolemy Day. Wait, so people have actually been in space? But we should give Ptolemy some credit. He basically invented geography. Without him, we wouldn't have latitude or longitude, which I think we can save help with the measurement of the Earth. And he did create the first map of the world. Thank you, Kepler. Yeah, except you left out the Americas. <laughs> it's okay. You didn't know. But one thing you all had in common. You all held the belief that the Earth was round. Before that, the Greeks believed the Earth was actually flat. <laughs> <laughs> Those silly Greeks. Uh... And I think we owe that all to you, Aristotle. Oh, I don't know. No, it's true. Without that fundamental concept, none of our ideas about orbit would have come to pass. All I did was study the eclipses of the moon. The shadows on the moon were always curved. During a lunar eclipse, the shadow the Earth cast on the moon was round. No matter where the moon was in the sky, it seemed obvious to conclude that the Earth was a sphere. Fantastic. Just fantastic. Here, here. Sure, everybody loves Aristotle. Now, Galileo, you made a number of important astronomical discoveries. Yes, indeed. Not to brag, but I was the first person to observe the stars in a planet with the help of a telescope. Yeah, one just like that. Where'd you get it? What were some of your major discoveries? I discovered that Venus goes through phases including the crescent phase, similar to our moon. Based on this, I concluded not only that Venus was orbiting the sun, but that the Earth was orbiting the sun from an even further distance. It's true. Your studies marked the beginning of modern astronomy. Well, you know, it's just another day in the office for me. Potatoes? Ptolemy? No thanks, I seem to have lost my appetite. Kepler, let's talk about your Hey! Sounds like a party in here! Newton! Hey. Hey. Isaac Newton! Kepler, long time no see! Likewise. Sorry I'm late, I uh, took a nap under a tree. You all know the story. Actually, you're just in time. We were just about to talk about Kepler's theory on planetary orbit. Yes, you see, before myself, all astronomers had adopted the theory that planets orbited the sun in a circular motion. But wait, I, wait, hold on. This is a good part. Go on, tell him. I theorized that the orbits of the planets were not circular, that they were, in fact, elliptical. It looks like an elongated circle. So I'm studying this nut Kepler here, right? And I've already got my own law that says objects travel in a straight line unless acted upon by an unbalanced force, and blah, blah, blah. So I start theorizing, hey, it's like there's some kind of force acting on the planets. And then it hit me. It's all about gravity. Yes, yes. So Kepler's ideas really helped build your theory. If I may, all of our theories over all the years have helped others in their studies. Except for Ptolemy. That's it, I'm leaving, I'm done. Ptolemy, hey, you know I'm a kidder. Come on, man. Aristotle makes a good point. Without the studies of those before us, and I'm including you in this, Ptolemy, where'd we all be? Yes, that's the spirit of astronomy and science. We formulate theories, conduct studies, and record data in the hopes of answering our questions about the world and the universe. If we can't answer those questions, then we hold on to the hope that our research will help astronomers in the future answer their own questions. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Well, that's me. Sorry. Yeah, I gotta take this, hold on. Hubble, hey man. So there you have it. A very informative dinner with some very intelligent astronomers. Now, let's put it all together. Who are you talking to? The ideas of different astronomers have come a long way. The Greeks believed the Earth was flat, but Aristotle taught that the Earth was actually round. Ptolemy and Copernicus provided us with concepts on orbit. Galileo gave us insight on other planets in our solar system. Kepler theorized elliptical orbits, then Newton attributed that to the sun and planets interacting through gravity. 
Since then, astronomy has only grown. Einstein and his theory of relativity, Hubble and his observations, and the many studies and missions of scientific organizations all around the world. Yes, indeed, astronomy has come a long way. And the cool thing is, we're learning more every day. Just think of what astronomers might discover in the future. New galaxies, furthered space travel, life on other planets. What do you think?